Hello, my name is Professor Graham Jackson and I'm here to reprise some of my talk from the COMI meeting around about the diagnostic criteria for monoclonal gammopathy of uncertain significance. Whenever we come across a patient with paraprotein, it's very important we work out what that paraprotein means. For someone to have MGUS, we must rule out myeloma. So they must have no CRAB defining events. They must not have a paraprotein of greater than 30 grams per deciliter or three grams per deciliter. Um, they must not have plasma cells greater than 10%. Uh, and they also, crucially now, must not have any myeloma-defining events. That's plasma cells greater than 60% in the marrow, uh, lytic lesions on MRI scan, or an abnormal light chain ratio of greater than 100. In the absence of myeloma-defining events and CRAB, and if they don't meet the criteria for multiple myeloma, this is monoclonal gammopathy of uncertain significance. This uh, becomes way more prevalent as patients age. It's present in around about 2 to 3% of the population over the age of 50, but that rises to 5% in patients over the age of 70, and to 70% uh, to 7%, sorry, in patients over the age of 85. We also find it more commonly in relatives of patients with MGUS or multiple myeloma. We also find it more commonly, particularly in younger age groups in patients of Afro-Caribbean descent. The other key thing about monoclonal gammopathy is that every person who goes on to get myeloma almost certainly has this as a prephase to their disease. There are two excellent studies, one from Ole Langdon and one from Professor Weiss, showing that patients with MGUS can be picked up five to eight years before patients get multiple myeloma. Progression of MGUS proceeds at around about 1% per year. Progression is more common in patients with IgM MGUS, but those patients are much more likely to develop lymphoma. For patients with IgA or IgG MGUS or light chain MGUS, the risks of progression are around about 1% per year. But we can drill down on this and work out which patients are more likely to progress. And there are three key characteristics that have been defined as meeting the criteria for increasing the risk of progression. They are an IgA paraprotein, a paraprotein of greater than 15 grams per liter, and an abnormal light chain ratio. And if you have all three of those abnormalities, you're much more likely to progress with about a 27% chance of progressing to multiple myeloma over 15 to 20 years. There are a couple of other features which may herald the risk of progression and those might be the change in paraprotein or light chain ratio. In face of a paraprotein that is rising or a light chain ratio that is deteriorating, that group of patients is much more likely to progress to multiple myeloma. For patients with an IgM paraprotein, because their risk is of lymphoma, those patients should have a CT scan. For patients with high risk MGUS, those patients should have a bone marrow and bone imaging those patients should probably be followed up for life in a myeloma clinic. For patients with low or intermediate low risk MGUS, those patients do not necessarily need a bone marrow at diagnosis and they don't necessarily need imaging. And they can be followed up once at six months and if there is no sign of progression, can probably be discharged to their primary care physician. We have to, however, be aware that MGUS patients do have some risks. They have a slightly greater risk of venous thromboembolic disease, and they have a slightly greater risk of bone disease. And finally, if we have a patient with a monoclonal gammopathy, there are some syndromes that are associated with toxicity of the paraprotein or light chain. And there is now a term called monoclonal gammopathy of clinical significance, where the paraprotein or light chain is toxic. That could be monoclonal gammopathy of renal significance, and that might include light chain deposition disease, or it might include heavy chain deposition disease. And equally, there can be pathology of the nervous system, POEM syndrome, for instance. There can be pathology of the eyes or the skin, such as xanthogranuloma and other skin conditions associated with the paraprotein. 
So if we diagnose a non-monoclonal gammopathy, we have to exclude myeloma, we have to assess the risk the patient has of progressing, and we have to make sure that the paraprotein and light chains are not pathological. There is no evidence of monoclonal gammopathy causing pathological damage to the patient.